All right, guys, today I'm talking about 10 expensive fragrances and less expensive alternatives for each of those 10 expensive fragrances. If you're curious to learn about them, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yeah, today we're talking about expensive fragrances that are loved in the community. And I've got a inexpensive alternative for each one of the fragrances. We've got lots of unisex offerings here. Maybe there's a few feminine offerings here as well, and perhaps a male offering uh, as well. But definitely great alternatives to very expensive, very popular fragrances. In fact, I love the you know the expensive versions or the regular versions, and then I also also love the less expensive alternatives to each of the fragrances as well and I'm not talking about clones but these might kind of come to be like clones somewhat but I think they're really really great alternatives I'll let you know about them before I do though if this is your first time tuning into this channel and you haven't subscribed please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways if you guys have really great alternatives to really expensive fragrances that are very very popular do let me know what they are so I can check into them and then perhaps report back we're gonna go ahead and get started with one of my favorite fragrances that I featured over the weekend in a video of Bergamot fragrances. This was my number one favorite. If you haven't caught that video, go catch it. It's Bergamot 22 from the house of Le Labo. Great smelling, freshy, it's just a beautiful combination of the juicy bergamot, very sparkly, very effervescent. You do have some grassy, earthy, woody vetiver in here, but lots of citruses and lots of citrus flowers, along with the leaves as well, and then you've got some musk in here. It smells super delicious, but there is a great alternative that I also featured in that last video. This is from an Egyptian house called Nila Far du Nil. It's Jardin de la Bergamot, a great inexpensive offering it smells fantastic. They're kind of close, but they're not identical kind of a thing, you know? I feel like this goes a little greener than uh, the Bergamot 22, the Nilafar du Nil, Jardins de, de la Bergamot. I feel like it's a little greener and also a little juicier than the Bergamot 22, where it's very, more floral. There's definitely greenness in both fragrances, but they have definitely differences where you'll notice and identify that they're kind of similar, but then they kind of dry down a little differently, if that makes sense. Both of them are great. If you love Bergamot 22, I highly recommend you try Nila Fardunil's Jardin de la Bergamot, uh, as I think it's a great alternative, especially since the Le Labo 100ml retails for around almost 300. I think it's 280 for the 100ml, and this is probably. Uh, the Jardin de la Bergamot is like around 150. Uh, selling at Lucky Scent, you can go check out over there. So moving on, the next fragrance combo I'm going to talk to you about is Lancôme's Eau de Bouquet. This one right here. And uh, this is a Swiss Arabian's Chagaf Oud. Great, you know, alternative of... Uh, the Oud Bouquet. And the Oud Bouquet, I feel like, is definitely a very popular kind of a gourmand Oud experience. And it has the Oud and Rose, it has the Pralines, it has the Vanilla, it has Gayak Wood and Kopahu Balm. So it's actually quite delicious. And I feel like all those kind of gourmandy, vanillic and syrupy, ambery notes in here kind of tone down the animalic, earthy, woody, oodiness of the Oud in here. But it's still prominent. It's definitely there. And it does a good job of uh, hiding it whereas it takes it into more of a unisex direction but there is that kind of like hint of the oud in there but with the Swiss Arabian which is much ex less expensive than the Lancôme I feel like it doesn't smell as luxury as the Lancôme oud bouquet there's definitely a less expensive quality I don't want to use the cheap uh, word here but this does sell for about 60 70 bucks online so it's fairly inexpensive I don't think it's a hundred ml but it's definitely a lot less expensive it just doesn't have the luxurious quality I should say but if you can get past that, which I'm sure most people do because I think this is a great scent, you can definitely experience uh, Oud Bouquet uh, in a less expensive form in uh, Chagaf Oud. Uh, the per performance, I think, is out of this world for Chagaf Oud. I think it lasts a long time. And with this uh, Lancôme's Oud Bouquet, I feel like 
it does have the more quality smell to it, but it doesn't have the longevity with it. It's it's decent performance, uh, and I don't want to dig into performance because this is just what happens with me. It could be all over the place with every single person. Some people say the uh, Shagaf Oud does not perform on them, but that's the experience I get with uh, with these two fragrances. But I think Shagaf Oud from Swiss Arabian is definitely a great alternative for Oud Bouquet from the House of Lancome. Have you guys compared those two? Do let me know. Uh, put a comment down so I can find out. And also do let me know of any other great alternatives to really, really um, great, very popular, expensive uh, niche fragrances or designer fragrances as well. So the next combo is sort of similar. You've got an alternative here that doesn't smell as luxurious of the, as the original. But I think if you want a less expensive alternative, you can totally get away with wearing this one. I'm talking about a Lab on Fire's What We Do in Paris is Secret against Youps Le Ban. So, you know, to me, they're also not as close as uh, what people think. Uh, they, whereas the previous two fragrances were really, really close. Here, it's more of a hint and a reminder of what we do as Secret in Paris versus like really reminding me of what we do as Secret in Paris. Also, the what we do as Secret in Paris is unisex targeted and the Youp Le Ban is a feminine targeted. But if you have no problem, test it out, see the differences. But both of them are focusing on tonka beans. It's a tonka bean bomb. And also the name for me, Le Ban, does not make sense for this particular fragrance because it's kind of gourmandish. But I'll take it, you know, I'll take a, a less expensive alternative of what we do in Paris as Secret because I I really love what we do in Paris a secret uh, and it's a very kind of honeyed sweet tonka nutty almond bitter kind of experience and the fact that this Laban kind of has similarities I should also say the performance is not as good but I think for the price point it definitely is a, a great alternative for what we do in Paris a secret have you guys compared these two together do let me know um, Put a comment down so I can find out. The What We Do in Paris is Secret is created by Dominic Ropion, a, a favorite perfumer of mine. I don't know who created Le Ban from the house of Youp, and uh, I'm so glad to have both. If I want the more luxurious version, I definitely go with the What We Do in Paris is Secret, but if I want a less expensive, definitely the Le Ban is available at the discounters. You can probably get it for, I don't know, somewhere around 60, 50, 60 bucks uh, for this one. So Youp Le Ban, Great alternative for a lab on fire is what we do in Paris is secret. So the next uh, duo I'm going to talk to you about are from the house of Louis Vuitton. It's uh, Afternoon Swim. And the great alternative, a less expensive alternative for it would be Aqua Allegoria, Guerlain's Aqua Allegoria collection, a Mandarin Basilique. So there are differences here, but when you strip away the basil, the basilique in uh, Mandarin Basilique, you're kind of left with a similar smell to Afternoon Swim. Absolutely one of my favorite fragrances from Louis Vuitton. It's a great summer fragrance. It's a very cozy citrus, kind of a citrus. There's no floral notes here, the citrus florals. It's mostly Mandarin orange with orange, and then there's also bergamot and ginger and ambergris. So there's a little zing, zing in there, but it's a very cozy experience. It's very juicy, drippy. And then the afternoon swim, you might think it's an aquatic or a marine. It definitely doesn't have any of those qualities. But I think uh, you're swimming in uh, like juice of uh, mandarin orange kind of a thing experience. It's a very, very juicy experience here. And also that kind of sweet um, citrusy experience. It's not uber tart here. So you're, you're not experiencing a very sour experience. It's very, very cozy and sweet experience. So it smells fantastic. But with the mandarin basilique from Guerlain, as I said, it's definitely mandarin orange and also the basil note, but uh, it could be a nice contrast to wearing something like afternoon swim, but with the basil kind of an edge, like you have this green aromatic herb contrasted with the sweet mandarin orange note here. It's actually a really great scent in both ways. I like both a lot, but if you're looking for a great alternative of this, uh, Afternoon Swim, and I think Mandarin Basilique will be a great alternative. Mandarin Basilique, there is a new Forte version, version coming out that I just reported on. I'm looking forward to that. So I'm assuming it's going to be a more concentrated, a stronger version. This is also, the Mandarin Basilique is also created by uh, Marie Salamagna. Uh, the Afternoon Swim is created by by uh, Jacques Cavalier. I think Jacques Cavalier used to work at uh, Fermaniche uh, along with um, people like uh, Marie Salamagna or Nathalie Lorson, somebody like uh, Alberto Moria. So perhaps he's using the similar ingredients for me to remind of uh, the same fragrance here. I don't know, but both of them are really great. Do check them out. Louis Vuitton Afternoon Swim. Great smell, but a great, a less expensive alternative would be Mandarin Basilique. So one last thing I should say, I don't know, 
the availability of um, Mandarin Basilic at discounters currently, uh, but I bought my original bottles for really expensive. They were discounted at discounters. So because of the pandemic and the supply chain issues, a lot of these fragrances, uh, the availability at discounters might not be, uh, you know, wide right now, but do look around. But the suggested retail price for uh, Mandarin Basilic for 100 ml probably is about 140 and for Afternoon Swim, uh, uh, you know, uh, 100 ml is about two. 6280 I believe so definitely there's a discount there there's a savings there and speaking of Guerlain we've got another Guerlain duo here but this time the Guerlain is the more expensive fragrance and there's a less expensive alternative I'm talking about Spiritus Double Vanille from the House of Guerlain wonderful boozy vanilla fragrance but a less expensive version would be Yves Rocher Queer de Nuit uh, this is Probably in the States, you're going to find this online. Go to the USA Yves Rocher website and get it there. And they usually have it on sale. You can get it for about 45, 50 bucks for 100 ml. But I feel like it's a great alternative to this kind of like boozy, syrupy, vanilla experience of uh, Spiritus Double Vanille. And it's a very, very popular fragrance, this Spiritual, Spiritus Double Vanille. I really love its booziness and its coziness. It smells like vanilla you would cook with, you know? It's got the syrupiness under there. There's a little booziness. Well, not a little, there's a lot of booziness here, but it's that vanilla and benzoin with a little floral touches thrown in. It's absolutely delicious. With the Queer de Nuit, it is definitely the boozy vanilla once again, but it's not as boozy as the Guerlain Spiritus Double Vanille, but still, I think it's a really great alternative. There's definitely some booziness there, but for me, it's a lots of dosages of vanilla with like hints of cacao. There's light hints of coffee and some spices of pink pepper. So Yves Rocher, Queer de Nuit. Those of you that live in France, do you go and frequent uh, the, um, not the Queer de Nuit store, the Yves Rocher store? Because I was in Lyon uh, on my last trip and I walked into a, a, a Yves Rocher store. I noticed that some of the fragrances in this collection were already discontinued. Uh, that's the only problem with a lot of these places. They do go through and discontinue a lot of fragrances. But I did notice that Cour de Nuit is still not discontinued, which is a great thing. Moving on to the House of Frederick Mall. It is... Musk Ravageur with a great alternative by the house of Lerbolario Meharis. Now, I was in Italy. I still can't find any of these Lerbolario fragrances in Italy. Where do I look? Please let me know. So I plan on going in September once again. I'll be in, uh, I'll be in Florence and I'll be in Milan at this particular time. I will be more in France. Uh, but I, I'd like to find out where you buy these fragrances from this house because I have no idea where they sell them. But for me, Mejares is a great alternative to Musk Ravageur because Musk Ravageur is around $300 for 100 ml. It might even be a little more. The only differences for me are they do remind me of one another, but I feel like the Musk Ravageur is definitely more musky and the Mejares, Mejares or Mejares is not as musky. Like you don't get that kind of animal like deer musk kind of experience and even though musk ravageur is definitely not animalic the musk is there and it has become more gourmand under Estee Lauder it was more musky under Frederick Mall as a brand but for me Mahariz is a great great alternative I think it's a 50 ml bottle and I bought it from Amazon and it was a very pricey shipping but it cost me about 75 80 bucks for a 50 ml uh, with the shipping so I ordered two bottles I still have this one and then a full bottle and the packaging is uh, you know nothing special it's just this cheap cardboard kind of a, a thin cardboard box but the juice itself is uh, definitely worth it it's definitely like I said a more gourmand take on something a musk ravageur and both of them are gourmand but as I was saying the musk ravageur definitely has the muskiness that the Mehari's doesn't and even though Mehari's does say it's got the musk it's less musk for me so Frederick Malls musk ravageur with uh, Lerbolario's Mehari's as a great alternative for that fragrance have you guys compared those fragrances and do let me know where do I find Lerbolario fragrances in Italy and have you tried any other fragrances from this house uh, I'd like to find out because people say it's really really cheap in Italy and again I don't know where they sell this stuff please do let me know all right I can't believe I'm doing this but I'm going to uh, feature 
Baccarat Rouge 540 from the house of Maison Francis Kirkjian, the original version, and a great alternative, and this is what I can't believe I'm doing, is Ariana Grande's Cloud. I am not the biggest fan of celebrity fragrances, but this is a great alternative to Baccarat Rouge 540. This is so expensive, it's really, really expensive, like a 50, no, a 70 ml bottle of this is around $300, I think. It's pricey. It's really, really pricey. And also, everybody wears it. Everybody knows it. Uh, and I, I would hate to, you know, take customers away from uh, Baccarat Rouge and Maison Francis Kirkchen, but if you're on a budget, this cloud is definitely a great alternative. It is a softer take on Baccarat Rouge. I feel like it's soft and cloudy. It does wear cloudy and the name is appropriate. But still, when you get past the clouds, the fluffiness, almost like foam, like mousse you spray to put on your hair kind of a thing to, to style your hair, that kind of soft or even shaving cream. After you get past that, it starts reminding me of Baccarat Rouge. But definitely, it's a great, great alternative and very, very inexpensive with the most ugliest bottle, I think. Plastic and kind of like toy or something but the juice inside is what I care for and again I'm not a big uh, promoter of celebrity fragrances there are a few out there that I really really like but if you can't afford Baccarat Rouge 540 the original I think Cloud is a great alternative you gotta display that bottle on your um drawers, uh, I mean your uh, dressers and things like that. But uh, yeah, you know, it's 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 definitely an alternative you can use. I'm sure there are others out there and more expensive, but for me, you can find this at discounters too because I've, I've bought a tester once for uh, a client of mine uh, without the cap and they were fine with it and it was like 60 bucks for 100 ml, something like that. So very, very inexpensive. If you can get past that, I think uh, Cloud is a great alternative to Baccarat Rouge 540. Uh, have you guys tried? Have you compared? I do have a video on the channel called Baccarat Rouge Babies. Go check that out if you're curious. Moving on to the House of Killian. It's Love Don't Be Shy. Yes, this is the fragrance uh, a lot of people hate me for because I keep uh, talking about this particular fragrance. A great alternative, a less expensive alternative to that is Guimauve from the House of Reminiscence. You can find this for about 50 bucks for 100 ml. Both of them are a little pinkish. Hate that color, but still, if you love Love Don't Be Shy, I think Guimauve is definitely a great alternative. The only differences are that this does feel a little more nutty, like it has an almondy quality to it. So if you like the idea of almonds with that whole love don't be shy thing, the combination of like a caramelly, sweet, sugary, no orange blossom, neroli combo, definitely great. And I don't want to rag on this fragrance too much today. I've ragged on it plenty. I think the reformulation is pretty weak. I mean, it's gotten really, really weak from what I used to get. And the whole color change thing, I still, I'm not gonna get into right now. But if you like this fragrance and you think it's too expensive because a full presentation, I think is around 250. I could be wrong. I think I, I haven't kept up with prices with Killian fragrances. I've kind of given up on the brand. I'm, I hardly speak about them, but, um, this Reminiscence Guimauve is definitely a great alternative for Love Don't Be Shy because this is very, very expensive and it doesn't smell the same as it used to. Either way, used to. Anyway, Gimov from Reminiscence, try it and compare it and see. Uh, one thing I should say, these less expensive fragrances are definitely not going to be the quality of the luxury ones. Some of them. Uh, earlier I mentioned one of them, like Chagaf Oud against uh, Lancôme's Oud Bouquet. I can definitely see the differences and you can, you'll see them, right? But if you're on a budget, you want the experience of that expensive fragrance, I think that cheaper, less expensive fragrances will do for you, you know? So the next combo is two fragrances that are expensive and reminds me of a less expensive fragrance, but I think this is going to be easier for Europeans to be able to get the fragrances that I'm going to recommend as an alternative. First of all, it's Portrait of a Lady from the house of uh, Frederick Mall, and also the combo with that with Rose 31, and I get that kind of cumin spiciness with Rose 31, and the warmth, because this uh, Le Labo Rose 31 is not as warm as uh, the Portrait of a Lady is. Both of them feature rose, they're both spicy. A great alternative to both of those together is Rammstein's uh, Rose and Rot, which I recently featured as 1010. Uh, budget inexpensive fragrances. It's such a great release guys. Those of you that li live in Germany that have easy access to these budget fragrances, th these are about 40, 50 euros. Um, I just ordered five more fragrances uh, from eBay. I should be getting them very soon and I'll do a video of like six different fragrances from Rammstein. Rammstein or Rammstein is a German metal band that I remember from the 90s I think. Anyway, I'm not a fan of that kind of music but the fragrances that they're 
launching are really, really great. And this uh, this particular Rosenrod is a kind of a metallic, spicy, green, stemmy, warm, cold, metallic mineral kind of an experience. So I feel like it reminds me both of Portrait of a Lady and Le Labo. So Ramstein or Ramstein's Rosenrod is a great fragrance. How many of you knows this house? Did you know it's a band creating fragrances? Have you tried Rosenrot? Have you tried any of their other fragrances? If you're a fan, do let me know which fragrances are really, really great because I, what I'm getting here is really, really good quality. And when I what I ordered online from eBay, I didn't get the very inexpensive prices. Some of the fragrances I ordered were close to 100 with shipping and everything because they were being shipped from Europe. But I'll report back on those and I'll do a video overview of five or six of their fragrances. But definitely Rosenrot is a great, great alternative for the combination of Portrait of a Lady and uh, Rose 31. Uh, definitely uh, great fragrances, but all three of them are great. I would recommend all three. Some are, you know, one is cheap and expensive. The other two are very, very expensive. And then uh, the last fragrance, until we get to the bonus, we're going to talk about Parfums de Marley's Delina. Oh, unfortunately, I have the exclusive version here. Sorry about that. Uh, against uh, this uh, Carolina Herrera, very good girl. So we're not talking about the... Uh, exclusive version. I accidentally got, grabbed the wrong one. It's back there somewhere. I don't want to dig in right now. Um, for me, both of them are created by the same perfumer and although this very good girl is not necessarily uber cheap, you might be able to get them at the discounters. I think still is a great alternative price because this fragrance, not the exclusive, the original, does sell for over $300 for a 75 ml. I believe it's a 75 ml. So it's quite pricey and it's very, very popular. Uh, and I think this is a great alternative. Not only is it smelling very similar, it does have its nuances. Some of the notes might not be as strong as uh, this the same notes that are stronger in this particular fragrance. But still, if you want a great alternative, you will have to have this kind of tacky lucky looking bottle, but you can smell like the Lina without paying the out outrageous price. The good thing is both fragrances are created by the same perfumer. So he's created the Lena. It's become such a success for Marley. It's the biggest seller for Marley. And now he's done something sort of similar for the house of uh, uh, Carolina Herrera, which is a house I don't speak too much about because some of their signature fragrances I can't stand. I think they're really, really cheap smelling. At least to me, they, they don't smell as good. But this is definitely quality. This does smell really great. Uh, the Carolina Herrera, very good, a very good girl. Uh, very uh, close to the original Parfums Marley Delina. The other thing is recently I did a little a day gig at uh, Neiman Marcus um, for Amouage. I was there representing Amouage and uh, promoting their new fragrances. And one of my followers from YouTube came in and I smelled her fragrance and I said, wow, that smells great on you. What are you wearing? And she said she was wearing Delina. So Delina is very, very popular. So if you're looking for a great alternative for Delina, definitely check this out. This is a very good girl from Carolina Herrera. And that's the last combo today. What are your thoughts on these alternatives? Are there other alternatives? And do you have a great alternative for, of another fragrance I did not discuss today? Please let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Okay, and last but not least, this is another Parfums de Marly fragrance that I'm going to give you an alternative for. And the fragrance I'm talking about is Carlisle. And a great alternative for it, a little dirtier alternative, would be Mancera's Red Tobacco. So, both of them I'm big fans of. In fact, I sampled Carlisle before it even made it to the States. I bought it from the boutique in Paris, fell in love with it instantly, and it was kind of sort of a combo of Herod and also Leighton together, kind of felt like that, because it does have tobacco-ish touches, but they don't claim that there's tobacco here. And here is Red Tobacco from the House of Mancera. Both of them are about the same milliliter. I think this is 120 or 125. This might be 120, so it's a little more here, but this is over $300, and this retails for 180, but you can get them at the discounters. I'll have a link in the info box. But the combination is great. Really, really intense fragrances. The tobacco, the red tobacco from Mancera 
is definitely dirtier, ashier, you can experience it. And also the spices are really, really prominent and pronounced. You can experience the cinnamon really, really strongly. And there is an apple note in here as well. But it does match this, they are similar. And if you're looking for a beast, both of them are beastly, but I think the Mancera is even more of a screamer. So if you're looking for a great alternative that's less expensive, try the red tobacco from Mancera. Anyway guys, I appreciate you tuning in. Stay tuned for another video tomorrow, bye.